So now let's talk about treating cancer by targeting receptor tyrosine kinases. So as we covered in a previous video, many human cancers have defects in their receptor tyrosine kinases, either that they are overexpressed or they contain point mutations or small deletions. Either way, uh, many human cancers have these receptor tyrosine kinases that are overactive. They are constantly phosphorylating their dimer partner and telling the cell to go from G1 to S phase. So uh, drugs, many drugs, are enzyme inhibitors. So it is uh, fairly straightforward to uh, design a drug that could inhibit an enzyme because enzymes typically have pockets that things fit into, um, and those pockets can be um, used for targets uh, as drugs could fit in those pockets and bind and block the activity of enzymes. And so hopefully in biochemistry, we, we remember things like competitive and non-competitive inhibitors. So receptor tyrosine kinases, right, they're enzymes, RTKs, or also growth factor receptors. They're typically tyrosine kinases. So uh, scientists have designed tyrosine kinase inhibitors that will bind to uh, RTKs and inhibit their kinase activity. So if you see TKI, TKI is tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Um, and there are, also, there are many tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Today we're just going to talk about some that inhibit receptor tyrosine kinases. And so again, to review, um, these growth factor receptors, which are also receptor tyrosine kinases, they're uh, in cancer tend to have very high activity. Again, they can be maybe overexpressed, maybe there's a mutation in them, maybe there's overexpression of the growth factor. Either way, in most human cancers, um, they are driven in part by receptor tyrosine kinases constantly phosphorylating those tyrosines in the tails of the partner dimer and getting the cell to go from G1 to S. So how could we stop this from happening? Well, uh, screen for or design compounds that block the kinase activity. Many tyrosine kinase inhibitors bind to the ATP binding pocket of the kinase. So remember, we, in a previous video, we talked about kinases and the domains of kinases. Many kinases have a pocket that binds ATP, a, another pocket that binds the substrate, and so the enzyme removes the phosphate from the ATP, uh, the terminal one, and transfers it to the substrate. So the ATP binding pocket is a great target for compounds that could bind in there. And if they bind in there, then those kinases will be unable to bind ATP, which means they'll be unable to phosphorylate their substrate, which again is the partner in the dimer pair. And in this case, now the kinase is inhibited. If the kinase is inhibited, then the tyrosines don't get phosphorylated and the cell loses that signal to tell it to go from G1 to S phase. So that actually can stop cells from going through the cell cycle. So let's see examples of some tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Uh, over 30 have been approved by the FDA for treatment of various um, uh, diseases, including many human cancers. And um, we can break the tyrosine kinase inhibitors down into ones that target specific RTKs or ones that are more um, multi-targeted. So here's a list of drugs, um, and these are their um, generic names. And uh, they've got very, you know, I'm not a pharmacist, so I can't pronounce all these things, but erlotinib, jefitinib, I'm not even going to pronounce the last one. Um, but these small compounds will bind to the ATP binding pocket, typically, of the receptors and inhibit the receptors from um, phosphorylating one another. So some of these compounds, like the first two at the top, only bind members of the EGFR family. Um, they typically do not bind or inhibit other growth factor receptors. Uh, the last one said it, said I read that bit. Anyway, uh, it binds to uh, the ATP binding pocket of VGFR, and so will prevent VGFR from phosphorylating its partner. Um, so some of these receptor tyrosine kinase inhibitors are very specific, and they only inhibit one or very few um, receptor tyrosine kinases. Others um, are multi-targeted, so they bind to many different tyrosine kinases. And here's an example of another compound um, brand name, 
lenitidib, which binds multiple growth factor receptors. So it binds the ATP binding pocket of both PDGFR and VEGFR and stops them from phosphorylating their dimer partner. Um, so uh, most of these drugs work more or less the same. They're ATP competitive inhibitors. Um, you will notice that a lot of these drugs that are tyrosine kinase inhibitors end in NIB or TINIB. So if you're interested in pharmaceutics uh, and how the mechanism of action of drugs work, if you see TINIB or NIB, that is typically, that, that, that will tell you it is a kinase inhibitor. And so now that you know that these growth factor receptors are also tyrosine kinases, it hopefully should make sense to you why a kinase inhibitor would prevent the cells from going through the cell cycle. So there are compounds that inhibit the kinase activity of receptor tyrosine kinases. There are also drugs on the market, which are biologicals, that actually can target receptor tyrosine kinases. These are monoclonal antibodies. So here's a cell, let's say, it, let's say it's a cancer cell that's overexpressing a receptor tyrosine kinase, and so they're um, running into one another at a high frequency and phosphorylating their tails, even though they shouldn't be. So one way to target the cell is to have an antibody that will bind that receptor tyrosine kinase. And scientists can develop these antibodies in mice and then humanize them for use in humans. And so these antibodies have antigen binding sites that will bind strongly and specifically to certain growth factor receptors. And that binding could have a number of effects on the cell. So the mechanism of action of these monoclonal antibodies, um, it, can be, it can vary. So one thing they can do is they can block the ligand from binding. So remember, these receptors, I've drawn no ligands binding them. But sometimes there are ligands there, and the cell is going to be very responsive to ligands. And the monoclonal antibody could block ligands from binding, so it'll get the cell to not respond to ligands anymore. Or it could keep the receptors far enough apart that they never get together to uh, transphosphorylate. So it is believed that monoclonal antibodies uh, can, could function either of these two ways. There are actually more uh, ways that they could function. Um, they could function by recruiting immune uh, attack to the cells. And so there's a whole separate uh, set of videos on the immune system uh, that I've made if you'd like to watch them. But when antibodies bind cells, antibodies can help the immune system identify usually a uh, pathogen, but in this, in this instance, the antibodies are helping the immune system identify a tumor cell. And so how does the immune system get rid of things covered in antibodies? Well, it could be through uh, something called antibody-dependent cell cytotoxicity. So that involves natural killer cells binding this thing covered in antibodies and then destroying it. Uh, macrophages, which are phagocytes, could come over and see this thing covered in antibodies and phagocytose and destroy the cell, or the complement system through the classical pathway could come over and decorate this uh, cell with complement, uh, and then you have complement activation and then destruction of the cell. So those are just possible ways that the uh, antibody binding to the cell could help destroy the cancer cell. Uh, and another way that uh, is currently being tested is to conjugate drugs, uh, specifically toxins, to the antibodies. So if you want to deliver uh, a toxic payload to the cell, either a chemically toxic payload or a radioactive payload to the cell to help destroy the cell, um, you're using antibodies to target the cell to bring something that is a toxin to the cell, helping destroy that cell. So these are just sort of three ways that antimonoclonal antibodies could or do work to help treat human cancers. Um, binding strongly and specifically to a receptor and either preventing the activation of the receptor or bringing things like the immune system or toxins to the cell to destroy it. And again, if you are interested in pharmaceutical compounds or uh, treatments, um, you will see that there are uh, drugs um, that target these receptor specifically. So again, um, 
I'm not a pharmacist or a clinician, so I don't like pronouncing all those uh, fancy names there. You can pronounce them yourselves. Um, but you'll see that they all end, end in MAB, monoclonal antibody. So any drug that ends with MAB is a monoclonal antibody. So the first one at the top, cetuximib, that is a monoclonal antibody that binds to the EGF receptor. And when it binds to it, it can do any number of things to it. It could inhibit the receptors from dimerizing or ligand binding, or it could break the immune system over, or it could be used as a delivery mechanism for toxin. Either way, um, using antibodies to target receptor tyrosine kinases is another way to help treat human cancers.